Let's get I just, uh, I guess real quick, um, again, we had a somewhat similar start that uh, we did last night where uh, Jared had to come up with another huge save and really kind of set the tone for the game there again. And uh, I guess as we look back, maybe we should have made the save against Colgate and we won't be talking about this bad luck stuff. But uh, two nights in a row, just uh, two ba a breakaway last night and, and then a great glove save backdoor uh, to set the tone. Uh, then a hitting from behind and a, a power play goal to give us a one nothing lead. And then I think the game really kind of changed uh, with our shorthanded goal. Uh, because now, instead of them scoring with less than a minute uh, in the period to be one all going into the, the, uh, the first intermission, we score shorthanded, so it's 2 nothing, and now we have something to build on. Because the margin of error for them gets a little bit more uh, narrow where if we score another goal, which we do, uh, to make it 3 nothing, it's a real uphill battle, uh, particularly with the way Jared and our defense is playing as a group. So. Uh, I thought really that uh, the shorthanded goal at the end of the period was uh, pivotal and then I, I think we could just grind it away and we did a really good job uh, throughout the second and the third is just a different period when you've got a big lead and, and they're stretching some guys out and uh, you know just made it a little bit different uh, way to play but I thought we played uh, handled that extremely well as well but uh, really uh, the bottom line really proud of the group here and as I, I've said to someone else I think uh, uh, really, uh, RIT has set a standard a long, long time before these guys were here in Division Three program, uh, a couple of national championships. Uh, one of the reasons I came here was because of the success and the excellence I've had in their program. And then we turn uh, Division One, and the guys before us have worked awfully hard uh, to set a standard for these guys. And now these guys have set a bar for the future. Uh, the seniors in particular have set a bar for the future for uh, other teams to try and achieve. And, uh, it's a certainly very, very high bar and something that uh, we don't take uh, for granted anymore. I think the first three years we've done very well and we thought it was just meant to be we're going to go to the NCAAs and, and we had to learn some tough lessons along the way and a lot of players, uh, unfortunately at their expense that are no longer with the program, had to pay a bit of a price for us to learn our lessons and we've learned our lessons very well and again, very excited about these guys uh, carrying on the RIT tradition. Questions for the players? Uh, Cameron, you, know, you played very well in this building pretty much every game you play. Is, it, is there something special about playing in a bigger building or just... Uh no, uh, I just come out every day and try and do the same thing. Uh, got a lot of positive reinforcement and everything from the seniors here. They uh, stepped up and set the framework for this team, set the rules for everybody to follow. And uh, it was great we had such a positive class here. Just really paved the way for us to come behind them and follow and get the job done. Uh, to Michael or uh, any of you guys, uh, a total of 53 shots on your goal this weekend and only one went in. What kind of message did that send down the line? Uh, I think it shows that we have great team defense. Uh, with our whatever six defensemen, all of our forwards, uh, penalty killing unit, power play. I mean, uh, to hold uh, for playoff hockey, to hold your team to whatever you said, 50 some odd shots is uh, quite a feat. <coughs> and uh, But it's, it's no different than we've been playing the whole year. We've been playing great defense from uh, day one. Um, once we got a few wins going, the, the defense picked up from there, but it's uh, every single guy in the locker room the, that's committed to playing team defense, and that's why we play so so strong in our own zone, um, in the neutral zone, in the offensive zone, and uh, everywhere, every zone it feeds off each, itself, and uh, you know we just we played a great 60 minutes uh, both games this weekend, so it's not too much more you can ask for. Defense wins championships, and we proved that tonight. No, I think uh, you, got, you got the first goal. Two minutes into this game, I mean, at that point, you're like, okay, this is going to be our night. They, you know, we you, you really had it going here with a major penalty. Things were going well. How much did that do for your confidence? Um, I think even before the game started, I could look in everybody's eyes and see that everybody was pretty ready to go. But I mean, the first first goal got me pretty jacked up, and uh, I can see it got the team pretty jacked up. And 
just wanted to continue on with the pressure and uh, the guys followed me. Uh, Dan, can you talk about making the NCAA tournament now? I know that's been a goal for a long time, and I'm sure you're looking forward to matching up with some powerhouse teams. Absolutely. We've, we're, we've worked so hard um, all the way from September, including and even before that in the summers and the past three seasons. And like I said before, I think the senior class has learned a lot from the last couple of years. It, it took a little bit of losing to learn how to win. And, you know, we finally got the AHA championship, but we want a little bit more. And, you know, we just take one game at a time from now on and, and just try to build on this. And uh, every, every, every game is a new, new opportunity. Again, open to anyone. Uh, you scored goals within the last two minutes of each of the three periods. What does that say about the constant drive and heart of your team? Well, like Coach said, anytime <coughs> you score in the last minute, it's a huge momentum swing. So um, that second goal is enormous for us. Um, the first goal we scored on the power play, um, I thought they did a great job of that initial five-minute kill. Uh, we scored a real nice goal early in the power play, but really didn't get much in the, in the last four minutes of it. Um, so. You know, we didn't really have it, uh, the momentum there, and you know they carried a little bit of the play um, at times in the first, but that second goal was huge for us. Uh, gave us a little more confidence coming into the second period. Good. Uh, my question is for Jared. Um, Coach touched on it earlier. Uh, second night in a row, less than a minute into the game, you had to face a pretty tough shot. Uh, what's going through your head when you know, less than a minute in, you're already making that big save? Well, the initial shot, actually, what the coach was talking about, I gave up a bad rebound. So when the puck went to that kid's stick, I was like, you better make this safe because this can be your fault. Uh, the team's played great in front of me the whole entire year. And uh, I mean, I, I should have controlled that rebound way better. It was an easy shot. I don't know why I gave up such a weak rebound. Um, but I, I mean, when I, once I knew that save, I, I knew it energized my team. I know last night after the breakaway uh, save that we made early, uh, the guys were saying that they were all jacked up. And uh, when you make a, a, an early save like that, uh, I mean, it gets Personally, my confidence going, it gets the defense going, uh, confidence going, the offense confidence going. And uh, I think, uh, I don't know if that save sent the tone, but it definitely uh, put our team put in the right step forward there. Sure. Anyone again, uh, it seemed like the first thing that happened was a Sacred Heart player got ejected. What kind of indication was that so early on in the game? I just well, I was kind of in a vulnerable position, but anytime you get hit from behind, it's, uh, it's a little hard on the head. But um, just for them to get that penalty there, you know, it uh, boosts our offense big time. Getting that early goal from Cam, and I think from there um, things just escalated, and everyone played so well. So um, unfortunately, he got kicked out of the game, but also um, you got to be smart out there. You know, your first couple shifts, you got to know when guys are in vulnerable, vulnerable positions, and lucky tonight. Coach, can you uh, maybe speak to uh, preparation for the for the NCAA? So what's coming up for you guys? Well, I guess we're going to have to wait first to see who we're going to play and where we're going. Uh, we obviously know it's going to be a very good opponent once you get down to 16 teams. So uh, we're going to go about our, our business, what we do well, and uh, we have to play to our strengths. We'll obviously take a look at uh, who we're playing and you know what we can do to help ourselves a little bit more and see if they have any tendencies. But it, you know, I always find that uh, when you get to this point of the season and you start focusing too much on the other team, you really distract what you've what got you there. And uh, so we'll, we'll keep trying to improve in the things that we think uh, what we need to work on. And uh, we'll take a look at them so that we're prepared to, uh, so that we have an idea of what they're doing. But uh, that's uh, tomorrow, I guess, is when we find out. Uh, uh, 11.30, I guess, they have their, their the ESPN2 has their show. So we'll be watching that and seeing uh, who and where we're playing. and. And we're just excited about the opportunity.